All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, we are looking at example number five for column buckling. In this case, we have some bracing that is going to impact the buckling in the YZ plane. So if we look at the effective lengths here, let's look at the effective length for the XZ plane first. It's going to be a little bit easier. Um, if we look at it in the XZ, we have a ball and socket at each end and nothing preventing it from just bowing out like that if it was to buckle in that direction. Uh, so the effective length, we treat this as a pin-pin connection, and the effective length would be equal to the length of the whole column, and that's going to be equal to 3 meters. Now if we look at the effective length for buckling in the YZ axis, it is impeded here, it can't just go out like that, it's going to uh, hit that bracing and stop. So what we really do is, if, uh, if, if we were to see buckling in this, uh, in this axis, it would be something like that where it's, uh, it can't move here, it's fixed in this part, so we're going to have bowing out like that, and then bowing out the other way down at the bottom there, or, or it could be the opposite. But when we look at this, if one of these sections is longer than the other, then that one is going to be the one of concern to us, but in this problem, they're each uh, the top half and the bottom half is each one half, so it's 1.5 meters. And basically what we do is we treat the, uh, if, even if we call this, uh, maybe we'll call the top half section A and the bottom half section B, then section A up here basically is just a column that is pinned on both ends because it has a pin up here and this type of bracing is uh, assuming it's frictionless and it's just preventing the motion there, then it's basically no different than a pin. So what we can do is we can even put another subscript here saying A or B because they're the same length. Um, and uh, that's just going to be equal to the L a or B, and uh, so that's just going to be 1.5 meters. All right, uh, we will be needing to use this expression here for P critical for buckling in each of those directions, but before we do that, we're going to need the moment of inertia about the X axis and the Y axis, so I'll just throw those up right here. And for buckling in the Y Z plane, let's throw in the subscripts here. Uh, we're going to need the moment of inertia about the Y axis. And if we just throw in all the numbers now that we have here, even we can put in the subscript uh, YZ for the effective length, we're going to find that the peak critical is equal to 29.2 kilonewtons. And then we want to check again for buckling in the XZ axis. So if we throw in our subscripts here, uh, we're going to have for XZ, we'll be using the moment of inertia about the X axis. And, uh, and then again, the effective length for the XZ, uh, buckling in the XZ plane. So if we do all of that, we just find that P critical is equal to 45.7 kilonewtons. So in this case, we look at them and we take the smaller of the two values, and that is going to be buckling in the YZ plane. So let's go and throw a box around that. It's going to be 29.2 kilonewtons, and that is going to be what causes us to get buckling, and that buckling is going to be in the YZ plane before it buckles. Uh, it we would need almost twice as much. Um, well, not quite. We, we would need more uh, applied load for it to buckle in the XZ plane, but it's, uh, it's going to buckle first in that YZ plane. All right, something else that we can do here is we can uh, just find our allowable load if we're given a factor of safety. Um, and so we have, all we have to do is just divide our ultimate load by uh, the factor of safety. So let's write that we have P allowable. Uh, is this going to be 29.2 kilonewtons divided by 2.5? And that's going to give us 11.7 kilonewtons. So that is the allowable load that we can apply to be uh, to be within our factor of safety here of 2.5. Now, as always, the one other thing that we want to check is, is this column going to yield before it buckles? Uh, and all we need to do there is we have the yield stress up here. It's 250 megapascals for this particular material. So we have uh, sigma, sigma y is going to be equal to just the applied load over the cross-sectional area. And uh, 20 millimeters times 50 millimeters, that's going to be 1,000 millimeters squared. So we can just rearrange this to find that load that's going to cause yielding. And uh, we're going to get P is equal to uh, 250 times 10 to the 6 newtons per meter squared times 1,000. So it's 1,000 millimeters, so that's 1,000 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared. And uh, that's going to give us 250,000 uh, newtons, or just 250 kilonewtons. So clearly, if we're getting yielding at two, an applied load of 250 kilonewtons, uh, but we're getting buckling at 29.2 kilonewtons, then 
uh, yielding is not the concern, buckling is, and the allowable load uh, that we'll be able to safely apply to this column is going to be determined by buckling in the YZ plane, and it is going to be 11.7 kilonewtons.